I think today, Hosaina won't be able to join us. Yeah. She asked me for the materials and so on. I will send the homework, inshallah, in the group. Inshallah. And also it's recorded so she can follow up there. Now I will share the... No, let's start with the homework first. You tell me about the article you read. And then I will share the video. Uh, so the article that I read was about uh, bad habits and how to get uh, rid of them. Um, we know that bad habits interrupt uh, our lives and prevent us from accomplishing our goals. Uh, uh, and it affects our health uh, mentally and physically. And they waste uh, our time and energy. So what is the key to actually get rid of those bad habits and improve our style of living? Uh, first, we got to know what caused bad habits. The bad okay. habits uh, actually uh, uh, come out of stress and boredom. Like when you feel stressed, you bite your nails. When you feel bored, you go, for, uh, for example, go shopping and you over uh, shop. And um, there is other uh, reasons for uh, bad habits, like uh, deeper uh, reasons, like uh, some things that happened in the past and you couldn't get over, like trauma, maybe um, other something uh, in the childhood. You mean? Yeah. You mean something in the childhood? Yes. Okay. And uh, the the first key and uh, the most important key is to actually. You can't eliminate your bad habits. You have to replace it. Like, for example, if you're smoking, uh, if you uh, start smoking, then you say, yeah, I have to quit smoking. You can't just get rid of uh, smoking. You have to start uh, gradually. Maybe replace smoking with other activity, jogging, swimming, I don't know, going to the library with uh, another activity that, that is healthy and is going to help you with quitting smoking. And also, uh, uh, to break a bad habit, you have to choose a substitute for your bad habit. And that's it. You have to replace it. And okay. cut out many triggers as possible. Like uh, when you say triggers, like if you uh, like eating uh, cookies in house, every time you grab a cookie and you want to lose weight and you can't get rid of that habit, yeah, you have to get problem. rid of the cookies. And uh, if you watch the uh, TV all day uh, long, because when you sit on the couch, you find the remote first thing, you have to get rid of the remote. Make it easier for yourself to actually get rid of your bad habits. And the other uh, step is join forces with somebody else. Like uh, if you're quitting uh, smoking, you have to join a social group, a group of people who are also in the same situation as you. It makes you stronger and surround yourself with people who live the same way uh, or the way you want to live. Like uh, people who actually idealize the way they live and visual yourself succeeding. Like imagine what, what would I be like if actually I got rid of all these bad habits, uh, habits I have. And you don't need to be someone else. You just need uh, to return uh, to, the, to the old you. You have to tell that yourself every day to actually uh, get rid of your bad habits. And that's it. Um, that was really interesting that we cannot actually um, get rid of it. Like you said, we cannot stop it. We can just uh, replace it with something. That's that true. was really interesting. And uh, that's right. Yeah, but I, I never thought of it that way, you know? Yeah, me like, myself. Sometimes when I, st uh, I try, uh, like, quitting something I consider bad habit, I can't just quit the, the uh, exact thing. I have to replace it. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, and what you said about cookies, that was absolutely <laughs> true about me. I was lose weight that I kept eating and eating. I think it's the same problem all the women face on the planet. That's um, true. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really interesting. What about the documentary? Uh, and the documentary I watched was, um, it was a true story of a homeless uh, young man named Tariq. Uh, this uh, homeless young man, he, uh, he for some reason, 
uh, lost his uh, place to uh, uh, which he used to stay in and he doesn't have any other contacts or family members to actually uh, help him so he was living a miserable life he couldn't get help he was uh, doing uh, drugs and doing uh, other bad things with his uh, group of friends that didn't care much enough about him so the thing that happened and changed his life forever that uh, one night when he was uh, waiting uh, for uh, someone uh, to ask uh, to crash in for uh, uh, to crash in his place he was waiting uh, for a text and uh, that night he met a guy uh, while uh, going to the bus station he uh, met a guy holding a sign uh, the sign was uh, uh, the sign uh, what said that uh, the guy is blind and deaf and if you can help me tab me uh, the guy needed to get uh, to some place, uh, which is uh, the same place he was going, that uh, other guy. And uh, the thing is that uh, the young man, the homeless uh, young man, just looked at him and uh, he felt bad inside, like he didn't have anyone else to help him. So he helped him. And the thing that amazed me, that was uh, the, uh, the other guy, the deaf and blind guy, he had a beautiful smile on his face even though it was cold and dark and there is no one around him. He was smiling and just being patient and, you know, it was uh, heartwarming and then he helped him. And the other thing that uh, happened in the end that uh, he realized that he never helped the blind man. The, the, uh, act, the thing that uh, actually happened, the blind and deaf man helped the other guy. From that moment, his life changed. He started working on himself. His life changed 180 degrees, like he mm. wasn't the same guy anymore. So do you believe like people can change? Yeah, I believe. You believe, okay, which is incredible. Um, that means you haven't lost trust in people. And that's good, like it should continue the same way. Impressive. Um, now I will share the PDF document so that we can see um, the book. One second. And continue with the vocabulary. I like that you can find interesting materials for um, reading and for the listening, like for the documentary. It was English vocabulary. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, last time we took till 15, right? And then we said from 16 to 22 for today, right? Lifestyle and leisure. Yes, free time and leisure. Okay. Um, I won't go one by one, but um, I'll ask you questions, but I want you to uh, use more than one of the phrases when you answer. Um, what do you think about of, uh, people that are a bit of a coach potato? Uh, do you think they have like better use of time or like the activities they have are time consuming but for, with no benefit?
Hi, honey. I, I guess you have the internet issues, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was saying, what do you think about a person who is a bit of a coach, a take And do you think this is kind of a um, time consuming activity with no actual benefit? Or you don't find it time consuming, like, you know, waste of time? What was the activity? Uh, people that are a bit of a coach potato. You uh, know, the ones that have Oh, I couldn't hear you clearly. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. Uh, do you, what do you think about? Do you hear me clearly now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, people that are a bit of a coach potato? You know, like lying in front of. Oh yeah. yeah, couch potato. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me myself, I am a coach potato, but uh, I think it's a bad habit. Why? Because spending the whole day on the couch, it isn't productive or uh, creative. You have to do something creative through the day and actually live your life. Maybe go out, go to the library, go to some sort of a cafe, do some actual live activity. Okay. Uh, so being a coach potato is actually like waste of time. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, I want you to tell me if... Um... If you have a full diary. Mm -hmm. uh, me? No, mm -hmm. I don't. Why? Well, I'm free most of the time. I don't have uh, any job and I'm at home most of the time. Like, I don't have any other plans. Yeah, no time for socializing and stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Tell me anything that you're hooked on. Um playing video games video games you love playing uh bs4 and uh, <laughs> playing uh, uh, mmo games and stuff okay uh what about um i i don't even ask if you're a shopaholic because in my opinion all the women are actually and we love doing shopping um do you remember any time when you locked yourself away from people and you at your time of your own? Uh, well, for me, uh, I have to do that at least three hours a day. I oh. have, to have uh, some me time, like uh, away from everyone. Amazing, three hours if you can spend with like on your own, it's amazing. Yeah, it's something necessary for me. Yeah, I appreciate it actually, like because people, you know, usually just run here and there and at the end of the day, they find themselves tired without doing anything. So it's, it's good to listen to yourself, actually. Um, do you think you are a bit of a dabbler? Um, yeah, I think I am sometimes. Like, uh, not these days, when I was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, so I liked uh, painting and drawing, and I thought that's something that uh, going to, you know, at least with me for the uh, long time. But I didn't like I get uh, bored of it and some other things like I get bored easily. OK, so you mean like you start and drop, you start and drop. It, it doesn't last longer, right? Yeah. OK. Um, what do you think is pretty lucrative these days? Like which, which job, which position, which activity? Um, I think uh, something that could be really lucrative uh, if it's not a job, like if it's hobby, like uh, 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 making accessories uh, by yourself, maybe selling them online, it's something I think uh, really lucrative. And you're doing your hobby. Uh, like designer clothes and stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Vipti. Um, what about... Um, People that are like, you know, culture vulture, like um, main, mainly travelers and people into this cultural differences and so on, trying new food every time and so on. Do you have such uh, friends or do you know such people? Um, yes, I do know someone that has that. Uh, she's a friend of my mother, uh, but I really admire her because she's really interested in uh, uh, going to other countries uh, to uh, explore their culture, their food, the way they live. I think it's really interesting. Okay. So would you like to be a culture of our culture yourself? I wish I could. <laughs>
of course that's fun like you try new things it's always interesting but sometimes you don't like what you try especially with these chinese japanese worms and bugs and stuff but some of them are yummy actually i know people that adore okay um let's talk about clothes a bit um are you into uniforms do you think like every workplace should have its own uniform and everyone has to follow a dress code at work yeah i believe that is uh, necessary but uh, like if other uh, occasions i don't think it's uh, necessary so in, in general it's necessary or only at work i believe it's oh. um, uh, yeah uh, in your daily life, let's say, not at work, would you prefer uh, skimpy clothes or baggy ones? Well, for me, I uh, prefer baggy clothes. Mm -hmm. Like loose, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it important for you to look shape? I think uh, everyone has their own way of looking uh, chic, and it's nice. Like, for me... I just wear my clothes simply, but uh, sometimes I add some things to look chic, kind of, in my opinion. Oh, okay. Do you uh, prefer having your own tailor or like having designer clothes or whatever? Or do you prefer uh, buying off the peg or buying off the rack? Uh, well, for me, most times I buy uh, off the bag, uh, but uh, sometimes I get designed uh, clothes. Oh, today in Turkey, which types of jeans or which types of trousers do you think are old age? Um, what I think is old age. Um, let me think. My, I'm not really interested in fashion, but uh, <laughs> me too. Me neither. Well, I think uh, like you know that slim jeans. Mm -hmm. Tight jeans, I don't really, uh, believe it's like uh, fashionable anymore. Okay, you mean like they are not old age? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is a must have item for you in, in your wardrobe? Again, I'm sorry. What is a must have item in your wardrobe? Um, must have item, well, scarves, like hijab. Okay, amazing. Uh, do you think people should catch on, um, you know, like catch up with the fashion or uh, it's okay if they become a slave to fashion or um, if they are a trendsetter? Like what, what is your opinion? Like should people go for being a trendsetter? Like you have your own style and people start following you or um, let's say you try to catch up with whatever the trend is or, um, you know, not catching up, like going a bit further and being a slave to fashion. So wh which way do you think is better? Or just finding whatever suits you and not caring about a new trend or something at all? Uh, well, for me, being like trendy and the, uh, everyone have to follow you and you follow the trend all the time, I think it's so exhausting. Just wear yeah. the things you actually like to wear and kind of stay like uh, tuned about what's fashionable and yeah, you know staying tuned is uh, okay but like not being uh, uh, desperate uh, to actually follow the trends yeah actually you know sometimes you buy something that's in fashion in vogue but the thing is it doesn't look good on you so yeah. just finding what suits you best is I, I guess the best solution because it may not be the trend but you may look quite fashionable, quite um, even popular, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, let's go for metaphors and talk about um, putting someone in a straight jacket. What does that mean? Uh, like putting them in a situation that uh, make them like uh, they can't do anything. Mm -hmm like limiting uh, uh, they like in a cage you yeah. know like they don't have the choice okay um can you use it in a sentence or can you tell me the condition situation okay 
my boss uh, had put me in a straight jacket when he uh, said that, uh, like, for example, I have to uh, be the uh, supervisor of the upcoming uh, project. Okay, like he limited you somehow. Um, maybe you wanted to take a holiday or two weeks off. So with this news, you were put in a straight jacket, right? You were restricted. It was like you have to come to work. Um, what about being hand in glove with someone? Um, it means that you're close to someone that you work with. Mm -hmm. Like you have a good relationship between uh, the two of you. Yeah, is it so because you like the person or is it so because maybe like your work depends on the other? Uh, person's work yeah it is mm -hmm. so maybe you're working in the same department or maybe you are um you are in a related department or something or maybe you see each other quite often so you are hand in glove with somebody okay uh let me ask one more okay speaking off the cuff what does that mean um like without actually preparing what you're about to say Okay, this is the last one, I promise. Um, to have something up your sleeve. Um, Use it in yeah. a sentence. Uh, okay, like um, uh, in a sentence, uh, we mm -hmm. discovered that uh, our colleague have uh, something up his sleeve when uh, we started our project. Like, uh, I think it's like a secret or an idea to actually improve the project. Exactly, like secret plan. Uh, or idea. Okay, let's talk about home styles and lifestyles. Um, like there are different types here. Okay, let's go for idioms. They are more interesting. Okay. Um, the restaurant owner offered the coffee on the house. What does that mean? That the coffee is paid by uh, the institution or the K. Sorry, the coffee is? Paid by the K. By the? K owner. K owner, exactly. Uh, if Joan is having his time of, uh, time of his life in Canada, what does that mean? Is it uh, night time or sad time, like bad time? Like he's having a really good time and that's gonna be a really good memory. Oh, okay. If I say like uh, Tom's life, the dog's life. Uh, what he's do you really mean? suffering, like uh, a really hard suffering. life. Exactly. If I say um, Julia got a new lease of life, what does that mean? Uh, what is it again? Julia uh, got a new lease of life. Um, got a new lead on life. I'm not sure. It's like um, you have a calm period in life, and after that, maybe you move into a very active period. Maybe you were a housewife, and suddenly you start working, and you become more active, going here and there. Oh, That's yeah. a new lease of life. Like, um, more becoming active. more active, yes, like yeah. more energetic. Um, okay. If something is not a matter of life and death. Is it important? Uh, if it's not? It's not. Matter of life and death. Uh, no, it's not important. If it is a matter of life and death, it is uh, important. Oh, okay. If someone led a very sheltered life, it means that life was safe or unpleasant? It was a protected life. Mm -hmm. It was safe, exactly. If life is in the fast lane or someone lived the life in the fast lane, what do you understand? I think it's a hectic life, like full exactly. of activities. Very active, exactly. Okay. Um, you get on like a house on fire with um, Joan. That means you and Joan are good friends or you're fighting all the time? Uh, that means we agree all the time. Like we get along uh, very well. Okay. Nike has become a household name. What's the meaning of this sentence? Uh, house? Household name. Household, um, let me think. Sorry. Nike is working with us, and I say, like, Nike has become a household name. It means everyone at work 
knows him or nobody knows him? Yeah, everybody knows him. Everybody knows him. Okay. Um, okay, the town is okay, but nothing to write home about. What does this mean? Like it wasn't special or uh, interesting in any way. It was uh, normal. Usual, exactly. Mm -hmm. Everything is before. Maybe there are some changes, but they're not that big, not that important. Okay, the difficulty of managing without a regular salary is hitting home now. What is the meaning of this sentence? Like hitting home, it's uh, like uh, uh, become fully understood or fully felt. Yeah, if I say, for example, uh, the economic situation is hitting homes now after this uh, global pandemic. Yeah, it's maybe affecting widely everyone. Exactly. Now people truly feel what, what difficulty it was. Okay. Uh, making one at home means? Like um, making you feel like you're at, own, you're at your own home. I feel really comfortable. Okay, thank you. Let's go on with socializing and networking. Okay, here we have what? What is a stag party? For example, my stag party. A uh, stag party is a, a party before wedding for the husband and his friends. Okay, what about a hen night? It's uh, for the uh, women, like the exactly. same thing, but for women. Exactly. And wedding party, when everyone is together, girls and boys, and would they celebrate this wedding, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what about housewarming? It's uh, a party that you have uh, to do after uh, buying a new house and like uh, moving to a new house. Okay. What about um, launch party? Uh, lunch party, let me see, um, like for a new book or a new project, I suppose. Exactly. When you're launching, something. let's say you are a, a singer, songwriter, you have your new album, you want to celebrate it, that's a launch party. You yeah. are an author, you have published your new book, that's a launch party. Or I don't know, whenever they're launching something new, you know, you have a new item, new product. Okay, um, what about black tie affair? Uh, it's uh, an, uh, a formal party, like you have to wear a black suit for men and for women evening dresses. Exactly. Okay, do you think networking is important? Um, networking? Mm -hmm. um, yes, it is know? important. Okay, you know the meaning of networking, right? Yeah. Okay, so what's the importance? What's the advantage? How, how does it work? How can we benefit from networking? I think like uh, networking, like uh, doing uh, your job on the internet maybe, or creating your own website. It's uh, really oh. important because these days... Uh, networking, yeah, maybe like social media can help with networking, but it's not only that. For example, when you... Uh, find the people that are in your field or in, in a related field and can, um, you know, you can help them and they can help you, you know, you're socializing. Usually we use networking for business, but um, again, still, for example, you're a very sociable person, you know, everyone in the area, you know, the, uh, I don't know, the owner of this coffee shop, you know, I don't know, the tailor, this person, that person, it's still network, you know, like your ties with other people. So how do you think it can benefit? People. Like it's your relationship with other uh, colleagues and yeah, maybe colleagues, maybe like people from different um, companies. Like you are a teacher, let's say there is another teacher in Canada. You use social media to uh, have the network, or let's say you met that person in a conference and you exchange your contact details so that in the future you can work on a project together, for example. Okay, uh, so I think it's uh, really necessary to actually uh, contact other uh, people that work in the same field as you. Why? Because it uh, makes you gain more uh, information and more uh, experience, even just uh, hearing what uh, the other person experience was like. It, uh, oh. it sometimes uh, helps you in a way or another. 
Okay, networking helps in one way or another, right? Okay. Um, what is the meaning of being proactive? Uh, being proactive uh, is uh, uh, taking action yourself, uh, like rather than waiting for someone else to take the action for you. Exactly. So, do you think people, like all the people, should be proactive? In the work, it depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like uh, sometimes you just uh, don't have enough uh, responsibility to make the, uh, the decision yourself, so you gotta wait for the other person who understands the situation fully. Okay, um, what about people rubbing shoulders with other people and? you know, those hobnobbing with the boss or with the manager. So what do you think of such people? I think it's uh, necessary because it breaks the rules, like uh, being always formal uh, to your boss and like uh, being the same thing every day. I think it's boring. Sometimes you just got to change. Yeah, sometimes you need to be friendly a bit. Yeah. And what about rubbing shoulders with other people? Uh, rubbing shoulders uh, it's the same thing like uh, getting close to or soci socializing okay. with uh, your boss maybe okay so both are fine um, do you know anyone who is a real party animal uh, no you don't know okay um, you know sometimes like in the workplaces they love rumors and gossips and so on and sometimes you hear that for example jack and uh, lucy are an item what is your reaction to someone who who says this to you uh, again i'm sorry imagine you are in the workplace and someone comes to you and tells you like jack and lucy are an item what would uh, your reaction or your response be? Or what would you think about this first and why? Um, I think I would be curious to actually know. <laughs> okay. If they are truly in a romantic relationship or not, right? Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, Joel isn't very happy because Molly stood him up last night. What's the meaning of this sentence? Like he failed to arrive uh, on time. Maybe he didn't show up uh, to their date. Yeah, so this is the sad news, kind of sad news. Um, out saying uh, my welcome and hanging out with someone, knocking around with someone, crowd and quick days are clear, I guess. Okay, let's talk about reviews and critics. Uh, barriers, repose. Okay, have you ever had the rehearsal of anything? Maybe at school, at university? I had uh, to do a rehearsal, yeah. I had to uh, make a speech uh, uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. If someone tells you that uh, this performance was um, a total flop. What do you think? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, a total? Total flop. Um, no, it's bad. Yes, so it is awful performance. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I want to find something that... If a movie is tedious, it is... Uh, it is uh, like boring, it, you know, it uh, isn't interesting. Okay. If it's far-fetched, is it realistic? Uh, something that's really hard to believe. Yeah. Um, so it is not realistic. Okay, let's go to 21, talking about visual art. Realism. Okay, do you know any clumsy person? Clumsy? Yeah. 
Sometimes I am um, actually, although I hate it, but sometimes I am. Me, myself, I'm clumsy sometimes. Uh, yeah, my, my younger sister. Yeah, she also does the thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. If we say somebody is peerless, what does that mean? Uh, somebody is what? Peerless. Um, like he's better than anyone else or like uh, it's really interesting. Exactly. He's the best. So you cannot compare this person to anybody else. Okay. If something is sophisticated, for example, this project is quite sophisticated. It means it's for professionals or amateurs. I think it's really um, complex, like uh, it's for uh, uh, professional. Exactly. Um, if something is highly difficult to understand, it's transparent or impenetrable? Uh, the other thing. Which one? Uh, Invertible. Impenetrable. Impenetrable. Okay. If something is, um, okay, that's making people think. It's unstimulating or thought-provoking. Uh, thought-provoking. Exactly. Okay. Portray and shadowy and others. Okay. Do you like paintings in general? I like what? Do you like paintings in general, like drawings and like art in general? Do you like? Uh, art, you mean? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I like uh, reading about uh, paints and uh, their stories. Like uh, it's interesting for me. Um, what about drawing? Do you like to draw or paint yourself? Me myself, I'm bad at this, <laughs> but it's, You're bad at uh, it. yeah, it's really enjoyable. Yeah, but you love uh, reading about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Have you with 22? I'll give you a break, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. And after the break, we'll continue with 22 and uh, the grammar exercise, I guess, we had last time. We couldn't check. So we can check them too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Welcome. See.